You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. International success coach and noted author, Constance Arnold, delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices, as well as with best-selling authors and experts that she interviews. Think, Believe, and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and words to work for you and to bring about a life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. And of course, I am Constance Arnold, your most gracious host. And today, I am broadcasting live from a beautiful, from awesome, from magnificent Atlanta, Georgia. And you know, I'm doing so with just a little touch of Southern flavor. I know you love that. And so excited that you have joined me from all over the world as a matter Matter of fact, this show streams into over 130 countries. That is so exciting. And so if you are listening to this recording, guess what? The Spirit of God has attracted you here, and it is a setup. I know that many of you have been praying, you've been seeking, you've been searching uh, for more um enlightenment, more revelation, more wisdom, more knowledge about all aspects of your of your life. And I can truly say that I believe, as a matter of fact, I know there's a certainty deep down on the inside of me that your life will never be the same again after listening to this recording today. Well, how are you doing? I hope that you're having a great day today. Can you believe that it is almost the end of February. This month went by so quickly and that's why it is so important that you be deliberate, intentional on a daily basis. Well, I'm excited about the show. Uh, My guest today is my mentor of 20 years, James Powers, and we're going to be talking about prayer. I'm going to give you four different ways that you might could be open to receive what we're going to be talking about. How about pray, believe, receive, or how to prepare to live the answers to your prayers, or manifest your prayers now, or pray and manifest your dreams through your prayers. And so we're going to be covering all aspects of prayer, because I know in my life personally, there have been many times when I pray and I just felt like nothing happened. And so James Powers is really going to be talking about universal principles around the law of prayer. And let's see, so many of you are emailing me and asking me the different ways that you can listen to me. And so, of course, you know, you can go to LORadioNetwork.com. And when you click on my picture to the right, you can see the different ways that you can listen to me through iTunes. You can subscribe. I got that out to my show on iTunes and have it downloaded to your smartphone, iPhone, Android, however you listen uh, to me. uh, We know that lot. Lots of you listen to us via your smartphone. Uh, You can listen through a blog talk, iHeart, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, so many different ways, tune in radio and uh, shoe talk. And so uh, it's your choice. And I would strongly recommend that you download the app for your mobile phone so that you can listen to me while you're driving. Uh, I know many of you in Europe listen to me on the bullet train on your way to work. And so downloading the app will really make it easy and convenient for you. And then lastly, of course, you know, you can always visit my website, fulfillingyourpurpose.com, and you can look under my success products. And there I have designed um, tools with you in mind. All of my books were written or downloaded by the Spirit. My Secrets of Success is 20 years of my clinical background in helping people uh, to develop 
permanent uh, transformational change in their lives. And uh, all of my affirmations are there to serve you. So you can uh, take a look at those. And if you're interested in shooting me an email, letting me know how this show is radically shifting and changing your life, I know that it is. You can email me at Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Well, I'm really excited to hear what James Powers is going to be sharing uh, with us. And so we're going to go to these quick commercials and then we're going to be right back with James Powers and we're going to be talking about prayer. For the past 30 years, Constance Arnold has coached clients globally in the areas of relationships, wealth and career. Her vast clinical background gives her extraordinary understanding of human behavior to accelerate manifestation. Every coaching client receives proven action plans to create change from the inside out. Constance will be right by your side. Talk to her today at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. Do you have an upcoming event where you need a dynamic speaker? Constance Arnold is a sought-after keynote speaker that will enlighten the entire audience with proven strategies that are aligned with your organization's vision and mission. An experienced speaker for major Fortune 500 companies, Constance has entertained audiences with inspiring change. Constance would love to make your next event an extraordinary success. Contact her today at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. Well, I'm back and I'm really excited about the show today. Uh, My mentor, James E. Powers, is back and we are going to be talking about a subject that all of us um, probably have questions about and that is prayer. Preparing to live the answers to your prayers, practical and decisive steps, taking constructive action now. So I'm excited about that. James E. Powers, welcome back to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Well, I'm glad to be back, and it's always an honor to work with you and know of the very fine work you're doing, reaching out around the world. And um, since you took so long to get, it took so long to get me on, it seems like you're making <laughs> up for it. But I'm yes. glad to be back. It's called payback. <laughs> Well, it's good payback, I promise you. Well, you know, um, you're coming on, um, you know, as your schedule permits, because I know you have so much to share. And uh, you sent me something in the email about prayer, preparing to live the answers to your prayers. And it really just struck my spirit. And I said to you, wow, we really need to to do this. So that's where we are going to start. So um, what made you really begin to think more about prayer? I, I know that just personally in my own life, there have been so many times where I felt like I was praying and then I didn't get an answer. And, you know, I know I, I received so many emails where people are saying, Constance, I'm just praying and believing spirit or praying and believing God or source. And but nothing is happening. So what made you kind of look at this journey of prayer? Well, one of the things that I realize is that probably for the last 30 or 40 years, uh, or even longer than that, when I was a child, people would say, well, now we got to say our prayer to God and and we had things we say we were trained that that's what we were supposed to do. I came in later on and got involved in pastoral work and had to pray for people quite often. And then there was a great emphasis at the place we were worshiping at on prayer, and uh, that was a blessing. But as I get older and get pr- hopefully more mature and more wisdom, you begin to ask the basic questions. What is it? How does this this entity called prayer affect my journey. And I made a decision, as you know, that I wanted to make sure that I wanted to live my future by living my present to the fullest. And in doing that, it makes me more sensitive to the spirit in me. Then that should also always go to the next step. If you are relating to the spirit in a way that's really uh, intimate, then your prayers ought to be formed in a different way and bring results. I'm believing that what got me on the journey is realizing that prayers can produce results 
and it has nothing to do with the answer of the prayer. It may have a lot to do with my expectations and the way I pray. So that's a short version of how I focus on that uh, mighty thing called prayer in my life. And we, and I know that a lot of my listeners um, are Muslim, Hindu, you know, all kind, you know, seekers, um, you know, Christians, New Age, and but everybody prays. I mean, prayer is just a part of our lives. And so I'm glad that we, we are talking a, about this because I personally have had so many answers in prayer. And uh, there have been times when I said, God, I feel like, you know, my prayer is not going any higher than the ceiling. So I, I'm just going to present to you some questions that I know that a lot of listeners are, are asking. So really, where does prayer begin? Well, first of all, it begins with the person who's praying, and hopefully they are prepared to understand that prayer for me for you, and you who uh, have a faith that we uh, operate under some of the principles, and that principle is that God is a, a source. And I believe that prayer simply begins with God. You say, well, why would that be the case? I was reading one day in the Old Testament, and it says in Isaiah 65, 24, before you call, mm -hmm. I will answer. And while you are let yet speaking, I will go ahead and meet your needs. And all throughout Scripture, you'll see where it is said that God already knows what you need before you ask. But there's something about the asking, not God sitting there and waiting. I've already answered 20 of your prayers, so you got your quota up for this month. It's open season on having your prayers answered if they are properly aligned with the spirit in you and the spirit that is God's spirit. So prayer begins literally with God. And when I begin to put words to the prayer that I sense in my communion with the spirit, those prayers ought to be certain because I'm not praying something and hoping that it come to pass, I'm praying, believe that it's just a matter of time that it will manifest the outcome. So once we pray, you know, are prayers answered immediately or is it a process? Because there have been some things, seems like I prayed about for years <laughs> that didn't happen. So how does that work? Well, it works this way. Our journey is a process. Yeah. Now, if I'm in trouble, falling out of an airplane, I'm, I don't need a process. I want something to happen right away. Well, that means that we think that when we are in trouble and we, as they said, we talked our way into a problem and we want to, don't want, we behaved ourselves into a problem and we want to quickly talk our way out of it. Yes, it's a process. And it's not a process necessary because God's got the time clock on you saying, I'm not going to do this. I think everything, even our own growth, even our own bodies process. And there are things that I believe personally, that when you ask for something and you're seeking for something, a lot has to do with the timing. I am so happy that I didn't get some of the prayers I was prayed for answered earlier. It would have wrecked me in many ways. So I trust when I pray that the prayer is in the process of being answered and I don't try to rush it. Hmm. I know, boy, if I had gotten some of the things I had prayed about, I think you have to be prepared to receive and even prepared for success. So, you know, you're so right on with that. So once we pray, how, how do we pray? I mean, there are so many different ways that people can pray. What, what would that look like? The most powerful way to pray is not a method. It's a, it's an attitude. Hmm. And that attitude has to do with faith. You have to pray in faith. Now, if you're praying for somebody else to give you something, and it's just dependent on that person giving it. But if I'm praying and believing that there's the spirit in me and the spirit of God that's attached to me as an individual is causing this to happen, I'm believing that I am supposed to be praying how? In faith. I am supposed to believe that what I am praying actually and can and will come to pass. So it doesn't matter what posture you take in prayer. It's how you choose to think about prayer and how you choose to think about 
the object of your prayer, and in this instance, it's God for, for us or the, the, the spirit of God in us. So bottom line, we pray in faith, in believing, and in receiving. Hmm. To me, if I wanted to say something, one, if you pray in faith, believing that this could happen, that it, no, no, can happen, will happen, then you have to go to the next stage of saying, now if I do, I got to be praying in a receiving mode that I've already received what I'm praying for as a result of my believing. I don't believe that I already have it in my hand. I'm believing that I'm receiving it. So you pray in faith, you pray in believing, and you pray in that you are receiving. I'm believing that I'm receiving. That is, for the lack of a better word, a prescription. I love that. I'm believing I'm receiving. So believing means it's a process. Receiving means that 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 is a process. And, you know, just your saying that it made it makes me think, you know, I can look back on some of the times I thought I was praying, but I really wasn't believing that I was receiving. Well, one of the things I want people to think about in your audience uh, that if we don't believe that everything is a process, how interesting how well it how long it takes the baby to be formed and how many people around the world it comes almost up to that amount of time. There's some time where it's earlier. Yeah. But it's the process. So if we realize that birth is a process, death is a process, metamorphosis between the caterpillar, the cocoon. So if we believe that we are not trying to push the river. We are trying to let it flow. I'm in faith. That the scriptures for me said, if you're going to come to God, the first thing you got to do is to believe that God is. Wow. Yeah. Then if I believe that God is, I have to take the next step and believe it, that this kind of God is not a God that will not reward me by honoring what I'm praying for. A jaundice or a, a ill ill-prepared view of God has a lot to do with prayer. Some people don't get their prayer answered because they see God as someone ready to punish them quicker than they would, he would reward them or the spirit would reward them. So I'm, I'm, I'm very keen on making sure that I establish, I recognize that there is an intelligence in the universe that I refer to as the spirit of God, the creator. And I believe that spirit exists and that spirit is working in me for my good. Now, once I get there and have that relationship with that dynamic relationship of spirit to spirit being quiet, I don't have to worry about whether the prayer will be answered. I'm just saying when I am in a mode of expectancy and anticipation. Wow. Well, you know, it's so interesting because I always say sometimes at the beginning of my show that a loving, supporting, giving, generous spirit uh, wants to co-create with you. Absolutely. And, and so when you have that kind of vision and image of who spirit, God or source is in your life, you know, that really keeps you in the believing and receiving mode. So. You know, so I, I, some people say, do I get out on my knees? Um, how do I pray? Uh, do I have to go into a closet? The, the Bible talks about going into your prayer closet. How does that work? Or does it even matter to God? I don't know that it matters. The, the main thing I'm doing is that is I come in a mode of reverence. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I said that if I have to go and try to find where God is before he'll answer, it may be that he's too far away. I heard a child say, well, maybe he's too far away. He can't hear me. I'm saying, no, the mama said that the kingdom of God is within. So when I get ready to go in my closet, I may be sitting at in my garage, just pulled in and thought I need to be still now. And the closet that I go into is deep within me to just be still. It is that deep place within where my spirit and the spirit of God begin to do this symbiotic rhythmic dance, if you will, where I'm not coming to him, to God for something. I'm just recognizing that this is the creative spirit of the universe who has a part of that residence in me. And that's my closet. 
Hmm. Closet means just get shut away. We, we are so busy, we don't have time to do that. But if you want to go in a closet, that's fine. <laughs> if you want to get on your knees, when I get on my knees, I'm just saying I'm in a position of submission, submitting myself and my entire being to this presence, where this presence is meeting my presence. Or I'm walking. I'm not jogging anymore because I'm not jogging, but I'm in any position that I feel like I can have the attention of the spirit and the spirit has my attention. That's the, that's the posture to pray. Okay. And then I've heard somebody say, well, you know, when you pray, sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes it's no, sometimes it's maybe. So do all prayers get answered? I say that if you got to know, that's an answer. Hmm. Now, I would want to say at this point, sometimes when people can't get prayers answered, we come up with ways and means to uh, justify why it didn't happen. I never assume that I'm not going to get an answer. I assume that if I am communing with the Spirit, if I'm praying a prayer and that prayer is not aligned with the Spirit, if I'm constantly in communion with the Spirit of God in me, I may change the nature of a prayer I pray because I was praying with the wrong spirit, with the wrong approach. I believe that any prayer that's uttered from the Spirit within me has the capacity to produce after its own kind. Hmm. So if someone is praying for health or healing, that prayer has the seed within itself to produce that. Yes, and one of the unfortunate things, I've gone to too many hospital beds where someone was believing, and they were just, just believing that they were going to overcome this, this powerful disease. And then they asked the question, why didn't God answer that prayer? And then theologians, everybody said, well, you know, it's this or that. I'm convinced that we have not reached the depth at which things could happen. If, in fact, we know that all things are possible, there are some people who had not reached a point I personally believe, and I may not have reached it at a point, where, where in the, one of the cases of Jesus, when he, when the centurion came to him and asked him uh, uh, to, you know, to help his uh, servant or son, and Jesus was about to go home when he said, "No, sir, I'm a man. I'm a military guy, and I know that if you say the word, I can say to my soldiers, go here and go there, and they'll obey. And I know you are greater than that. Why don't you just send the word, and I know my servant will be healed. There was faith both places." Now, at the level that that happened, he said, this is what Jesus said, I've never seen anything like this in all of Israel. So that apparently means there are levels of places where people can believe at a level that's more than what some others could believe, not because God is passing out levels of prayer. It's sometimes it's the lack of knowledge, the lack of uh, intensity, of fervency. I can't answer that. There are a lot of things I don't try to answer. But I know if the law works, because it didn't work for one person, doesn't mean I disqualify the law. So prayer is a law. It's, it's, it's just like anything else. There are, and, and, and I don't mean a law in the sense that if you don't follow all the rules, the law is like reaping what you sow or the law of uh, uh, or any other spiritual law. Law of gravity. Has, yes, like the law of gravity. It means that at this point, if you follow a prescribed way of approaching it first, that's why you come and believe. First thing, you first have to come to God in my, in my faith and believe that God exists. If I don't believe that God exists and then keep on praying, the lack of any belief in that could necessarily be the reason that I can't get because I have already blocked it because if I don't believe that that's a source, and I'm praying to it just in case, then I, I'm praying in partial doubt. So true. You know, and I just felt as you were speaking, all of my listeners in third world countries, I get so many emails from, from many listeners in third world countries, you know, prayer, and, and you know, you talk to me about what you don't have, but, but prayer, since it is a law, it can create the miraculous in our lives, no matter where we live geographically. 
and, and I'm glad you mentioned that. In many developing com- com- countries where uh, I've had an opportunity to travel, there are people whose faith is so strong, they just believe it without a lot of reasoning. Yeah. They just said, oh, you said it, this could happen. If you put your hands on me, it, it happened. And these people, faith is what? Because many times in Jesus, he said, you know, it wasn't nothing that I did. It said, your faith made you this way. So our belief system is everything. Wow. What we believe determines the outcome of the destiny and the journey of our lives. So, so when we're praying, uh, what is the condition of, of how we need to see things or, you know, because when we're praying for something, uh, let's just say someone is sick or we need more money, the condition of our internal vision or eyes is, it's not, it's not clear. It's, 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 it's cloudy. So what does that need to look like? You know, if there's 2020 vision for our physical eyes, then what is 2020, quote unquote, vision spiritually? That's where I don't have any blocks in my relate, in my knowing, here's the word, knowing, not thinking yet. I have to be in a a a place of knowing about certain things. And that knowing leads me to believing and receiving. So I'm of the opinion and I'm of the thought process that My vision cannot be clouded with fear, anxiety, and doubt. Those are the things that create what I call spiritual glaucoma or or, or spiritual whatever it is. Because doubt and unbelief creates the, 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 the thing that works against the faith that we ought to have when we pray. You know, it's really hard to have faith to not have doubt and unbelief when seemingly the circumstances just many times or many people seem overwhelming. And and I agree with that. One of the things that is often said that many people or my people perish because of the lack of knowledge, the lack of knowing. Now that's powerful. When someone has not heard what the benefits of being a first, just a human being created in the image of God. If they always feel like they were less or people made them feel less, the lack of knowledge of who they are may block the opening door that stands before that they could stand before and get what they desire when they pray. So most times it's either people have not been taught what they need to know. I mean, we don't let someone put someone in the Super Bowl and get them off the street two weeks before and take them in and, and expect them to do it. Or well, why do we who get into our whatever religious uh, persuasion we are and figure that it's just going to come to us by osmosis? It comes to us by understanding the laws in, the, in, in whatever place you are, whether it's Methodist, Baptist, or whatever denomination or whatever religion, you have to be in a position where you know that there's nothing between you and the fact that you have a creator. Now, if you have doubt there, that's when you stand in a place where I can't get answers because I'm not fully vested in what I need to know. And so basically, you know, like I said earlier, people and you said people when they pray need to have confidence uh, that there is a loving, giving, supporting spirit that's ready to co-create with them and to hear and answer their prayers. Well, I'm sure this is one of the questions you may ask or, or consider asking. You, do you realize that I said once, I'm not sure I want any, just anybody praying for me. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. And the reason it is because some people pray the problem. Mm. So if I go in, my position when I go visit in the hospital, I prefer not to know what the nature of the disease that the person had. Because then my focus is on praying about the disease. And the more emphasis and effort I give to the disease, the less emphasis I can get to making, seeing this person become whole. One of the things that Christians you ought to know for sure, Jesus never, ever, I don't think you could find, dealt with people on the basis of their disease. He asked them, not do you want to be healed, he asked them, do you want to be made whole? Because to draw attention to the leper's leprosy 
He just said, you want to be made whole and just put his hand on that alone said this is a person who was not supposed to touch us and he feels like he can touch us and in that process it caused them to be made whole i'm convinced they pray sometimes not only the problem they pray for the symptom example i got a fever and i'm asking the doctor to give me all the prescription to, to break the fever that's my goal the issue is not just the fever it's what caused the fever and we who pray pray the problem pray the symptom and never get underneath and say, what is the source of this? So that my prayer is, I want to be made whole. I want my body to be made whole. I want my, the organs of my body because they respond to what's in my mouth. Our bodies respond to what we say, not unlike it responded when, when Jesus sent that word and they said, when he said, be healed, they asked him what time did the kid, did the kid get healed? And when they figured it out, it was the same time that he had said what it was. So we are powerful creatures if we understand that we are made in the image and in the likeness of the spirit that created us. So true. So for listeners, praying the problem would be, oh, God, I don't have any money or, oh, spirit, I, I, I'm lonely. So you, and, and so it's really like like attracts like. It's almost the law of attraction mixed in there where, you know, whatever you focus on, what quantum fixes that you bring more of that into your life. And so I really want all of you to really hear that point about not praying the problem, but the solution. That's very powerful. And, and conscious, just one other thing. Many people can't see the solution of their pr- solution because the, the problem is overshadowing their ability to see it. And so how did they pray then? Should they just say, make me whole, help my unbelief? Because sometimes circumstances can appear to be overwhelming. And that's where people's focus is. And, and let me see just a little question that always ought to be asked. We ought to ask this question often during the day about ourselves. What's going on here? What is really going on in me? What's going on in my thinking? Because we, whatever we, whatever position we have, someone who have defaulted and really got into negative thinking, it is hard to come anything to come out of negative thinking other than negative behavior. And that's the sad part. So ask the question sometimes: What's going on here? What do I need to know that I don't know? People very seldom ask that question. Now, when you ask that question, you have to be still enough to be still. And many times you'll see, I've been speaking too, speaking too many Ill, ill-advised things against other people. And my tongue and my mouth is destroying my health. When I, re- when I realize that I am responsible for what comes out of my mouth and what comes out of my mouth ought to be this. My body is not whole. My, my, there's nothing in my home. My kitchen is bare. I want food in my house rather than focusing on the lack of the food. I grew up in a place where people were very self-sufficient. Su- if they didn't have something, they looked around and made something almost out of nothing, and the kids never knew how difficult it was because they didn't make the problem the giant. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, I, I can't overemphasize that the way we think generally control the way we pray. Wow. That's powerful. Just so- think about this now. If I know it could put a monitor on the way I think, I'm, no, I'm this, I'm not any good, I'm not this, I never will get anything, and then I turn around to have faith for praying, We got to have the faith for not speaking negatively about ourselves and others. And then that could lead to the faith to believe that I can overcome whatever this situation I have. So true. Well, faith is a law. So where should people begin? Where should people begin? First of all, as I said before, they should begin first with me, with God, as it says. Mm -hmm. I believe that there is a spirit in the universe that we call God, and there was a representation of that God called Christ, 
And I believe that with everything with me. That's the starting point for me, even ever thinking about living right. And then I want to make sure that I have the faith. So many times I have to start with believing that faith, I have, the, faith is the substance of the things I'm hoping for. So faith becomes substance and evidence of things not seen. So I start with God, I start with faith, and I want to make sure that in my life, I basically want to walk by what I see. Hmm. The way to walk is by faith and believing. I've seen some people who had no education, grew up, and, and reared, reared all of their children because they had faith in the outcome. They weren't what we call book smart, but they had a faith that was indomitable. And the next thing is they work the principles. I need to do that ASK. I need to learn how to start asking, seeking, and knock. He said, if you ask, you'll be given to you. If you seek, you'll find. If you knock, a door will be open. But that means that in some addition, you've got to be properly aligned with your spirit, soul, and body, and with the spirit that created you. And there's a way to do that. And obviously, we can't cover all of that on this case. But we're trying to say today, don't think that you can't get prayers answered by a God who's passing out uh, tokens on who should get it today. So ask is like, that sounds continuous, asking, seeking, knocking. Once again, that's that process, not just ask, seek, you know, and keep knocking, you know, and knock, it's, it's knocking and seeking and asking. Well, here, here's the, what you just said. I always look for the, when I'm looking at a word, when they add the I-N-G, I'm asking now, mm -hmm. I'm asking tomorrow, and while I'm asking tomorrow, I'm not asking for something tomorrow that I've asked for today in doubt. I'm coming back asking in a way I'm saying, I thank you for answering what I asked yesterday, and I'm just coming back to reinforce my asking by being grateful. So all these INGs, asking, seeking, and knocking, represent, as you said, a process. But most people who are really in trouble, the process the talk doesn't work. It sure well. doesn't. Yeah, this is so good. And, and so if you're just joining me, I'm speaking with James E. Powers. He's my mentor of 20 years. And we're talking about preparing to live the answers to your prayers. I, I think that's so interesting. And, and so how can we prepare to live answer prayers? Well, preparing to live answered prayers start, as I said, in the heart of the spirit of the person and in the heart of the spirit all over. That says that if your prayers were answered. Now, when that, when that topic was given to me, if you, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, had prayed, have prayed a prayer, do you know what the outcome of your life would look like if your prayers got answered next week? How much would your life change as a result of that? And if you believe that, why not? If it's going to take six months, why not start living your life now the way it would be once the prayer is answered? Then you are exercising faith. Mm. You're saying, I believe this so much, I'm going to change my lifestyle to match the answer to my prayer. Wow. wow. So let's I, just say someone who wants a career and and. Um, and, and right now they're commuting for an hour and 30 minutes. And so if they have prayed and believed for a job closer to home, they could begin to say, wow, it feels so good just to have a 30 minute commute. That means that's that's going to give me some extra time to go to the gym. It feels so great to get home an hour early to my children and really spend some great time with them, helping them with their homework. So is that what you mean by living it out before it actually manifests on the physical plane? Let's take that same scenario. Okay. If you're preparing for that, you would say you would always have a schedule written and sit down at a table with your kids and say, now, mom or dad is praying for something. When it happened, this is how our schedule is going to look. I got home today at six o'clock. We're going to be getting home at five. 
Wow. And the dinner will be ready and you'll eat. And here are the things you're going to be able to do before we go to bed. And when you plant it in another child, in a child's mind, you are putting yourself out there to believe that this is the way it's going to happen. You start building a schedule. I told my daughter several years ago, if you knew that you were going to be married at a certain time, begin to live the schedule that you would have with your husband and your children three and four years ahead of time to see what your life is like. Because if you don't, you will build up a schedule that you can't cut back and, 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 and you'll have children and running them around in the back of the car trying to get them place to place. And they are great at getting from place to place, but they never can enjoy the parent because they never chose to live a life that included a lot of time with their children or a lot of time with their spouse. Wow. So preparing to live the uh, the life of your answer prayers, that really keeps you in a place of faith when you do that. Yes, or reveal the faith that you don't have. See, right now, there were people who would come to me and say, I want you to pray with me about something. I said, what is it? And they'll tell me, I said, now, tell me all of the things right now before I pray for you. What is your life going to look like? What are you going to do different? And they look at me and said, I came for prayer. I didn't came to do that. That means that you don't have faith for because you hadn't thought about what you would do with your life if you did not have the problem you were facing. And I'm saying faith comes by action. And the action is plan a life and do as much about it as you can before the prayer is answered. Hmm. To align with the prayer that you pray. That's Absolutely. Very powerful. Yeah. If that everybody would powerful. practice that one principle, yeah. that when someone, see, when I tell my children I'm going to take these to tell them I'm going to go to Disney World, those kids the night before are already, and the two weeks before, are acting like they're at Disney. They know what they're going to do. And of course, you know me. I'm, I'm always the planning for the things far in advance. And I would talk to them about it unless it was a surprise. So why not believe that those children with that innocence had received that for you? That's why I said if you're going to tell a child something, make sure you can do it. Because if you don't, the disappointment is devastating. Yeah. Because they had already lived what you said you were going to do five, six times, told their friends because they had faith in you and they had faith in themselves. So pray in a way that you have enough faith in it to change your actions toward the outcome of your prayer. Yeah, you know, just that one step, wow, that's amazing. So let's talk about some practical and decisive steps or actions that people can begin to take and implement into their lives. Step one, is to master or begin the process of knowing how to be still. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, we are speed bunnies. We are robotic. We don't know really how to be still. And, when, and, and I hear Psalm 4 to 610 always impress me. It says, be still, not think, be still and know. Mm. which means in a mode of being still, knowing comes to you. And as a result of that, then you could think carefully and deeply about the prayer you need to pray. There are people who pray on the fly. I know I need to pray about that. I'm praying about that. And when I hear that, I think, I don't think so. Because if you are praying about that, the T-H-A-T will be a plan that you think will come to pass. So be still in order that you can be think carefully and deeply and deliberately even before you form the prayer. The prayer you for you are a co-creator of your future with God. So don't create a prayer that can turn some people pray things and they get it and then they wish they never had it. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that's the next thing. Don't pray the symptoms. We said that earlier. Mm -hmm. Take this step. When you get ready to pray, look at, inspect your prayers and see, are you talking more about what, what is not happening instead of praying what should happen? 
Lord, I pray the negative prayer. Lord, I don't want this in my life. Lord, I don't. Well, tell me what you want in your life. Replace what you don't want in a prayer that says, this is what I want or this is what my desire is. Remember the word desire, four words. If you're a Christian, or even if you're not a Christian, it's worth reading this. Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. It says, whatsoever things you desire, desire, underline, when you pray, underline pray, believe that you receive, you see, and you will have it. There's, look at that, desire, pray, believe, receive. And I'm asking you to, in a practical way, study that and see what that will do to your lifestyle if you understood desire, prayer, believing, and receiving. That's one. And as you walk down that, pray a prayer field, pray with a prayer field faith. A faith that when you say it, you have faith in your prayer. <laughs> I've heard people pray and then turn around and say, I, I pray, but I don't, I, don't, I don't know what is going to happen. They didn't have faith in their prayer. Mm -hmm. And pray for results. Have you ever thought about someone would do something and not think about the results of what they were praying for? Wow. I heard somebody have, say there's profit in prayer. There's profit in prayer. Now, here's a large one. This is a practical thing. I want you to think about this. I want you to develop a clear picture or an image of the prayers you want answered. Mm. Now, when you do that, I'm going to ask you to want, be still, and when you pray the prayer, look back at it and see whether you could write the prayer down that you prayed. And then go back from time to time and look at the prayer, and you will find yourself adjusting it because all of a sudden you thought, oh, no, no, I didn't mean it that way. But when you refine your prayer, you are like an architect. You are forming this prayer in a manner that the spirit wants you to form it so that the outcome could be according to what's good for your life. That's one. That's so good. Well, and so basically, if people would live their lives like that prayer was answered and then get a image, a clear picture of their prayers being answered. That's a powerful process. It is, and it's a law. I've heard many people who said, I grew up in the ghetto, and everybody else saw the ghetto. I saw outside of the ghetto, and I focused my attention on there. And my attention was so focused on the out, nothing wrong with the, the ghetto and this, is, but they wanted more. Mm -hmm. They didn't want the things that were happening around. And I've heard people over and over again say, when I knew anything, opportunities were coming my way that wouldn't have come to me because I was looking for something better. Or a teacher would say, I see something in you. The person was dreaming, not about their surroundings, but the surroundings outside of their surrounding. And people were, you draw people to you by the power of your vision and your imagination. People come to you, circumstances come. So that's a big one to, to, to and, and please practice the state of being thankful and being grateful, gratitude about your prayer being answered. So, so should people be thankful? Thank you for healing me. Thank you for bringing love into my, should they do that prior to seeing any physical results in their lives? If somebody promised in my will and told me several years early, that they had a million dollars for me, but I won't get it until they die. Every time I see them, guess what I'll be doing? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's, so because they had the confidence that the person was going to do it, and you know, even with people who would have that million dollars, the stress on their life would be different because they have a certainty about something in the future that's good for them. And while they get that attitude, there are a lot more good things will happen to them between them and that million dollars. Wow. Well, well you know, I, I just never, I know I heard it, but it's just really resonating with me about living your life like your prayer is answered. I think that's so powerful. And, and let me just say this. A lot okay. of people say that's the problem. Take any child and maybe you. You were in the little room when you were about eight or ten. 
whether you had a, tr uh, a, a Lego set or whether you had a, 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 a car set or whether you had a, the little gir the girls at that time used to get the little tea sets. Mm -hmm. And you'd walk in the room and they'd be having a conversation, they'd be serving people in there and you'd look in the room, seemed like a room full of people. What, walk in and ask them and they'll tell you all the characters because they had such a powerful, vivid, vivid imagination. We got grown and big and turned off the thing in us that was the most important, and that's the power of our imagination. And once you start living your, um, that imagine, the, 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 the digestive system in your body, the, 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 the stress on your body will be diminished greatly because your brain doesn't know the difference between whether what you are thinking and believing is real or not real. It'll process exactly what you are thinking. Negatively think that way, your brain will cooperate with you. Yeah. And, you know, I told one of my list, one of my clients, rather, uh, she really wanted to attract love in her life. And I told her, I said, well, you know, begin to make plans, you know, like you already have love in your life. So she found, you know, just... The, just this great restaurant and she went to you know take a look at it and and you know so in her thinking and looked at the menu she said well this is where we're going to go on one of our dates and you know she looked at the prices and looked at the menu and that was her way of making new plans and decisions just like she already had love in her life and you know one of the things I say, I say to people now when they said they they're looking for the, you know the right person and looking for love in their life and the first thing I said, wonderful, what does that look like? Uh -huh. Then if you want love in your life, you get busy being love in every station you can find in your life. And as your result of being love, it may not be romantic love, but this self-given love called agape, when you start practicing love at that level, you will attract, that agape will attract things into your life. I'm not trying to attract a man, I'm trying to attract love and when love come and come by me and say, kind of, oh, that's for me right there. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah, be really like, good. yeah, be, be, there's a statement, be the change you want to see, be the love that you want to receive. Mm, that's really good. So, so how can people begin uh, taking constructive action now? And why is that important? It's important because we are, ba we are made to be givers. Mm -hmm. We're made to really serve. Many people don't like to serve, but that's one of the highest forms. So I want to ask you, closing, and as we come to a close today, begin one of the most, most constructive actions you can do is to begin by encouraging people that are it, suffer, having issues in the same area you have. Be an encouragement to them because in your efforts to be encouraged, you are doing something inside of your spirit and your mind that says this person is that I'm living with brain, mind is encouraging someone else. And they start feeling that, Oh, as I encourage someone else, they were encouraging themselves. The, David, the great King said he gave, when there was nobody else to encourage him, he encouraged himself mm -hmm. in the Lord. That's number one. Number two, Think deeply about doing something you cannot do now. Why, why is that important? Because once you start thinking about what something deeply you cannot do now, it, 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 it sparks your imagination and you start acting like what you can't do, you can do inside of your mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it, it is the birthplace of great inventions. So what I'm, what I'm asking you to do is when I say think deeply about it, the reason you can't think shallow about it because you'll say there's nothing. I, 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 if I can't do it now, I can't do it by thinking about it. That deep, quiet time, you will begin to see things you can do and you may discover things about yourself that you never knew and get on a path that you never thought you would get on in your life. Next thing, and this is a big one for me, Hmm. Create a new atmosphere around you. Hmm. Create a new atmosphere. And I said the first place I start was when I think I'm, my mind is cluttered, I go to my closet. 
and see how orderly things are in my closet. And things, if things are disheveled in my closet, it's because it was my mind is representative of what's going on in that closet. So when I do that, take take that, order it. The next thing you want to do is look in the trunk of your car. Uh oh, I'm in trouble. I'm, trun- I'm in trouble. <laughs> Uh, it, seriously, this is an amazing thing. When we are confused and frustrated and down, we tend to let things default to something we wouldn't do. Yeah. Go look in your trunk and look on your back seat. Mm. And whatever that looks like, that tells you something about how well you will be able to think and think orderly. Because the things around you are the reflection of the things that's going on in you. Mm. Then, anything that is out of order creates a negative environment for praying and for living. Mm. When you have a negative environment around your prayers turn into a begging session rather than a session of confidence. In other words, they said in the beginning, they said, and God went into chaos and brought, brought order out of chaos. Look around you in some areas that are chaotic and reach in and bring order out of it by doing some simple things. And you'll be amazed at what your life would be like. You'll be more at peace and you'll think better about yourself. Sometimes people start thinking worse about themselves because the environment starts reflecting what they're thinking and they start seeing what they are seeing in the environment. And they start thinking, oh, man, I just I'm depressed. I'm not talking about clinical depression. It's kind of depressed where I just can't stand seeing this place like that anymore. Get busy bringing order out of chaos. Wow. We have about two minutes in closing. What would you like to leave with people? This has been so powerful. I'd like to say, number one, there's not a person listening on the sound of my voice and the sound of constant voice who cannot make a radical change in the way they pray and the way they live. Yeah. You have to be very careful that if you are coming to ask someone for something, when you go grocery shopping, you ever go grocery shopping without a list? How many things do you miss coming out of the store and say, I forgot that, I forgot that? Make a list, a prayer list. And look at that list and see how, not only what's on your list, ask this question, how should I pray about this? And I believe that once you start getting diligent about that, you will realize that your life has already changed. Your life is changing today. Yeah. Even if it's doing something that you, did, you, did, you may not have felt good about, your life is changing today. Wow. I'm going to listen to this over and over and over again because just personally, it has really impacted and really uh, changed something on the inside of me. And I just want to thank you so much, James E. Powers. I'm so grateful to you and your wife and just you're such a gift to me in my life and now to the world. And uh, thank you so much. It has been my pleasure and blessings to you for the work you do, Constance. Thank you. Well, once again, uh, this is Constance Arnold. You know what I'm going to say, right? Uh, You can visit my website, fulfillingyourpurpose.com. And as I say every Sunday, remember this, that God loves you. I love you. And the best is yet to come. You better believe it. Thank you for listening to Think, Believe, and Manifest. Constance Arnold will be back next week with another great show just for you. For more information, please visit fulfillingyourpurpose.com. And now, an ad from Dad. <clears throat> All right, save money on car insurance when you bundle home and auto with Progressive. Can I take these off? All right. What is this? This looks good. Wow. That's well made. Where did you get this? I'm talking to you with the hair. Yeah, where did you get this? It's good stuff. That's solid. That's not veneer. That's solid stuff. Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home and auto. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Discounts not available in all states or situations.